Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling blessed in Jesus this morning. Now, we're continuing our study through the book of James, and today we find ourselves in James chapter 3 and verse 13. Now, I want to focus on verse 13 because there's some hidden importance here that we need to discover for ourselves. So let us read this verse together. James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Now, when it speaks of conversation here, in the Greek, that's speaking of a manner of living, the way we live our lives. It's not the words that we say. So let's read that again. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good lifestyle his works with meekness of wisdom. Now, we're told in the Bible that Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. And we find that in the book of 1 Kings chapter 3. And if you look at verse 5, King David, Solomon's father, has just died. And Solomon is going to take over the reign or the rule of Jerusalem, of the people of God. And so God appears to him in a dream and says unto Solomon, ask whatever you want and I will give it to you. Now, if God were to ask you that question, what would you pick? I mean, out of all the things that your mind could race toward, you can only choose one thing. What would it be? Well, look at verse 9, because Solomon says, this is what I would ask, that you would give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and bad. In other words, Solomon foregoes gold, he foregoes women. He foregoes all the things that he could have in this life. And he asks for the simplicity of wisdom. And God is so amazed by his response that in verse 11, God says, because you have asked for wisdom and you have not asked for long life, you have not asked for riches, you have not asked for the life of your enemies, but instead you have asked for wisdom. So in verse 12, I will give you wisdom, but I will give you also all the other things. Now, let us be clear here. This isn't a charm that we use before God so that we can acquire all the things in this life we want. But God knew Solomon's heart. He knew Solomon was sincere. So he imparted unto him wisdom. And notice in verse 12, it says, Behold, I've done according to your words. I've given you a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So before Solomon, there was none wiser. After Solomon, there was none wiser. Only the Lord Jesus, because he was God in the flesh. Well, understanding that, let's look at our text again. James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is a wise man? Well, if we want to know what a wise man is, what it requires to be wise, wouldn't we look to the wisest man that ever lived, that being Solomon? And in order to do that, we must turn to the book of Proverbs to see what Solomon had to say about wisdom. So let's look at verse 5 of chapter 1, and we'll just work our way through the Proverbs, seeing what a wise man is. Now, Solomon says, a wise man will hear and he will increase learning. He will be hungry for truth, and he will realize that all that has been written isn't necessarily truth. So he will search diligently to discover the truth for himself. It continues by saying, a man of understanding will attain unto wise counsels. Not all counsel, but wise counsel. He will seek truth from those who have discovered the truth so that they may impart to him their wisdom and he can glean and learn from that. We'll look at chapter 3 and verse 7. 
It says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Do not become puffed up by the things that you think that you know. Instead, fear the Lord and depart from evil. Well, that's very simple. You would think that all could be obedient to that, but only those that receive the wisdom from the Holy Spirit, the guidance and the power of the Holy Spirit are able to fear the Lord and to depart from evil. Well, look at chapter 10 in verse 1. A wise son maketh a glad father. Now, if we cross this with chapter 13, verse 1, it says, A wise son heareth his father's instruction. And so what Solomon is telling us here is that a wise man will receive instruction from his father, and by doing so, in honoring his father, he will make his father proud. Because a good father is never going to impart things that are going to hurt others or hurt his son. And so if the father is imparting wise counsel unto the son and the son honors his father and strives to be obedient unto the things that his father is teaching him, he will certainly make his father proud. We'll look at chapter 10, verse 8. The wise in heart will receive commandments. The wise in heart will have a teachable spirit, understanding that there are those who have gone before them They understand that they themselves have not acquired all knowledge, and so they are willing to learn, as we just read, from men of wise counsel. Look at verse 14. Wise men lay up knowledge. They store knowledge. They ponder it. They question it, so that not only do they intellectually understand the things that they're being taught and being told, but they're wrestling with these truths until they become enlightened and they see the truth for themselves, and it moves from an intellectual knowledge to a heart knowledge, where they truly get it. Look at verse 19. In the multitude of words is much sin, but he that refrains his lips is wise. And what Solomon is saying is that we are not to speak on emotion. That's what much of what we see taking place in the world today. So many are acting out based upon their own emotional feelings, be it the students in college or be it those members of the press who should be analytical, not weighing in on either side, not favoring either side, but seeking the truth and telling the truth as it is being discovered. And yet they are so emotional in what they want to happen that they're acting on their emotions and they're speaking without refraining their lips. We do this in the heat of emotion as well. But a wise man will seal his lips, contemplate what he's going to say before he says it, so that he can ensure he's speaking from the position of wisdom and not the position of necessarily his heart, his emotions, his feelings. Now again, let's remember our text, James chapter 3, verse 13, who is a wise man among you? And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at these passages that tell us what wisdom is and to see if we see these characteristics within ourselves or if these may be areas that we need to work on, press into so that we can become brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus, who carry these qualities of wisdom with us throughout our day. We'll look at chapter 11, verse 30. It says, he that winneth souls is wise. In other words, he that imparts the things that he is being enlightened to, to others that are seeking that enlightenment, not to all others. Jesus said, cast not your pearls before swine. But there are those who are seeking truth, And when we find them, when we come upon them, we want to impart to them the truths, the things the Lord has shown us through and by his spirit, enabling us to be more obedient, more dedicated servants of the Lord our God. We'll look at chapter 12, verse 15. It says, he that hearkens unto counsel is wise. He that will position himself in a seat of learning. He that will not allow himself to think that he's got it all figured out, but he is learning from others. Look at chapter 13, verse 20. 
He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Surround yourself with wise men. Surround yourself with good, honest, biblical teaching. Now, there are practical aspects to all of these truths that we've talked about so far that apply to any issue in life, but we're looking for the spiritual aspect. And so if we want to ascend in the way that we see God, the way that we understand God, if we want to become more enlightened, then we must find those around us who are enlightened, who have seemed to arrive at least at that point in their journey, and those are the ones we want to surround ourselves with. So we're not going to give ourselves to the many frivolous, empty, vain things that we can find on television, social media, internet, but we're going to place ourselves under the sound teaching of the doctrine of the Bible, and we're going to train to be better students of the word. And this is what chapter 14, verse 16 says, a wise man fears, and because he fears God, he departs from evil. He doesn't chase after things or spend his time on things that are frivolous, vain, and empty, but he gives his time and attention to things that will help him grow in the spirit, grow in his understanding of God and the word of God. Look at chapter 15, verse 7. It says, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge. We spoke about this a few moments ago. We're going to find those. We're going to search for those. We're going to keep an eye out for those who are hungry for truth, and we're going to spill everything that we have learned into them because we see their hunger and thirst for righteousness. Look at chapter 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is ravaging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So flip that. Let's look at the opposite of that. A wise man will abstain from wine and strong drink. That's what it says. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is ravaging, and whoever participates in these things is not wise. So if you want to be wise, don't participate in these things. And this would include, of course, the legal use of marijuana, prescription drugs, and other such forms of altering of the mind. Look at chapter 24, verse 23. After all the things that Solomon has said wisdom is, he says in verse 23, these things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. In other words, it's hard to be critical when a relationship has been established because we tend to favor those we're in relationship with as opposed to a total stranger. And so Solomon is saying, don't allow the relationship to blur your eyes because you might would go to a stranger and rebuke them, but you won't go to your own brother. You won't go to your own mother. You won't go to your own father. You won't go to your own pastor. And so showing respect of persons is an act of a lack of wisdom. However, if we treat all men equal, this is a show of wisdom. Look at chapter 29, verse 11. It says, a fool speaks all of his mind but a wise man keeps it in till afterwards. He considers what he says before he says it. And there's several reasons for this. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. So sometimes we must remember more importance should be given to how we communicate rather than to what we communicate. Say what you mean, mean what you say, say it without being mean. And this forces us to stop and think, consider how we're going to communicate what it is that needs to be said. Well, Solomon, after relaying all of these things to us of what wisdom is, at the end of his life, and in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13, this is what he says. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. When all is said and done, what is the basic truth that we're to walk away with, that we're to stand upon, that we're to build our lives upon? This is it, says Solomon. Fear God. Keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. 
And you do this because you understand that God is going to bring every work into judgment with every secret thing that has been done. Those things that you think no one else knows about, all will be revealed and made open, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So again, let us fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty. So when we read James chapter 3, verse 13, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let us not read too quickly over that, continuing through the chapter, but let us stop and consider that. What is a wise man? And once I have learned what the qualities, the characteristics of a wise man are, am I a wise man? Does my life exhibit the wisdom of the Lord? And if being honest with ourselves, we see ourselves falling short, let us begin to seek the Lord for these qualities. Let us begin to discipline ourselves in the areas required so that we can put an end to foolishness and we too can become wise. Well, I love you, brothers. I love you, sisters. And I'm so thankful again that you're with us this morning. And I pray that this truth from God's word has spoken to your heart and challenged you in new ways. Because ultimately, our goal is to be more like Jesus in all things. And we know that as wise as Solomon was, Jesus was the wiser. And Jesus lived out these qualities with perfect and absolute perfection. And he has given us his spirit, enabling us to achieve the same levels of maturity. But it's going to require hard work. It's going to require discipline. It's going to require focus. And it's going to require our utmost attention so that we don't allow our minds for one minute to go idle. But we are constantly alert and aware of all the things that we need to do to be the best followers of the Lord Jesus as we can possibly be. Well, may your day be blessed today, friends. May you allow the Lord Jesus to lead you into quiet and gentle places. And may you experience the fullness of all his blessing. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.